All right, we're back. We are doing Calc AB Notes 23, all about slope fields. Um, slope fields, visual representations of um, all possible solutions to a differential equation. So you want to get good at reading them. You want to get good at um, drawing a particular solution through a point, which is what we're about to do. Um, there's just a lot of stuff, right? And the more you do with them, the more you get used to it. They're not really that bad, um, but it's like a new language and you have to get used to it. So uh, we're on page three, so let's see if we can do it. Uh, so the slope field for the differential equation. So this is a differential equation because it has a derivative in it, right? That dy dx is what's making this a differential equation. Um, this one has no x's in it, which means as you move left and right, you would not expect the slope to change because the slope is just based on y. So if I move up or down within the field, I would expect the slope to change. But horizontally, I would expect nothing to change. And if you look at the slope field, you can see that that actually happens. All right, so first question. Sketch solution curves passing through each of the indicated points. All right, so I guess I'll try to use three different colors on this because there's three different uh, points. Um, so you're never allowed to pass through a horizontal or a vertical asymptote with your solution curves. So we're gonna try to sketch a solution curve. And what I do is I just imagine that this is like a, a flowing water situation, some kind of fluid that's flowing. You drop something into the fluid and you see where it goes. So if I start at the point A, um, let me like make this bigger. So if I start at the point A and I drop something in there, uh, if it follows to the right, it looks like it's just gonna go up. If I went back and to the left, um, or just to the left, I guess, uh, think about what's happening, right? So uh, it looks like we're gonna go down like this, but then we're gonna get caught kind of moving. This is really hard for me to do for some reason. Uh, we're gonna get caught moving this way, right? So there's a horizontal asymptote there. It's just passing right, you can see the horizontal line that is passing straight through the slope field. That's gonna be an asymptote for any solution that approaches it. So in fact, when you look at the slope field, if you can see a line anywhere in it, like one, like, like a linear function passing through it, that's gonna end up an asymptote for any solution that approaches it. So for example, when I look at the point B, which I will use a different color for, so I look at the point B, okay, if I'm gonna go to the right, I just dump something into the water here, what does it do? So at first, it's gonna dip down like really fast, it looks kind of, and then it's gonna slow down, and then it's just gonna kinda follow along this. It's never actually gonna get there, but I am not good enough at drawing them to make that not happen. Um, now, what if we went the other way, right? So you just follow the flow of the river, what's gonna happen? So if the river is now flowing uh, to the left, uh, you drop something in at point B, what does it do? It first goes this way, and then it kind of is gonna level off. And then, uh, I just can't draw straight lines. So yours, yours probably looks better. Uh, I think on paper, maybe it would look a little better, but like, if I'm being honest, it probably wouldn't um, for me. So uh, we're just following the contours, right? So uh, you drop something into this, this flowing water, where does it go? So here, if I drop in, and I, golly, that's a big point. Um, let, me, let me move it up a little bit. So if I drop in here, can't do, I can't make a smaller point. It's like, hold on, let me, let me try one more time. I think, okay, that's better, right? We drop in there. If we're going to the right, what happens? You get caught up in the current and you just kind of go like this. If on the other hand, you're flowing to the left, there's, you're just gonna plummet, right? Look, look at how steep this is. That's like, you're probably doing something like this. So you can see, if you can picture it as flowing water, you're dropping something in the water, it follows the current, you'll be really good at drawing these solution curves. You cannot pass through a horizontal line, a vertical line. Um, if there's a, a, a slanted line, it'll be an asymptote, and we'll see some of those. But uh, these are our solution curves. So you do the best you can. Uh, you try to make it look you know, pretty accurate. Uh, all right, let's see, part B. What two horizontal lines are definitely solutions to the differential equation? Okay, so I look at this and I'm going to, uh, I'll go for another color here. Just looking at the slope field, I can see that the slopes are zero 
when y is equal to two. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna let the uh, I'm gonna let the little app here just turn this into a line. So I tried my best. Um, so this definitely, and then also down here at y equals negative two, the slopes are always zero, uh, and you can see it. I mean, it's a it's a horizontal line. Like it, it's pretty pretty clear um, where these are. So I'm gonna say that uh, y equals two and y equals negative two. So y equals two and y equals negative two. All right, but there's like more going on here, right? So if, and this is, we're gonna verify that these are solutions. So if y equals negative two, I'm sorry, if y, let's start with y equals two, because that's one I wrote first. So I'm trying to get it so that we can see both the differential equation, which is y squared minus four, and y equals two and y equals negative two. Maybe you kind of have a sense of what I'm gonna to try to do here. I'm gonna show that these are solutions. So if y equals two, then I can take the, let me, uh, let me reorient myself here. I'll put these here so that I just have more space, right? Um, and then I'll erase this comma. All right, here we go. So if I take the derivative, I would get dy dx equals zero, right? That's just by taking the derivative. So uh, take, oh God. You know, it's like the first video I make every day, I just forget how to write. Take derivative. So that's if I take the derivative. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can take y equals two and I can sub it in to the differential equation. And if I sub it into the differential equation, it's telling me that, so this would be by subbing in, how am I gonna arrow to that? Uh, I'll just write, if I sub in, I would get dy dx equals, um, so y is equal to two, so two squared minus four, which is four minus four, which is zero. If you get the same thing both times, it's a solution. So I got zero both times, zero and zero, which means it's a solution. And you can see that if we did that with y equals negative two, the same thing will happen, right? So if I take the derivative, I'm gonna get dy dx is equal to zero. If I substitute in, I'll get dy dx is equal to the quantity negative two squared minus four, which is zero. Since I've gotten the same thing both times, what are you doing? Uh, I thought I was using a highlighter uh, here and here get the same thing, it's a solution. So we definitely have found that those two horizontal lines are solutions. You can see them visually in the slope field, but you can also find them, right? Uh, another thing that we could have done here, we're looking for horizontal lines that are solutions to this. So I don't know where I'm gonna um, write this that it would really like fit. Uh, I'm gonna use like this greenish color. So if I go back up here, um, and then go over here maybe. Uh, a horizontal line has a slope of zero. The horizontal line slope is zero. My handwriting is really bad today. I don't know why. I don't really know what makes that happen, but some days it's worse than others. Um, so the slope is zero, which means that dy dx equals zero, which means that y squared minus four equals zero, which means that y plus two, y minus two equals zero, which means y equals two or negative two. So this is another way. So we found it visually in the slope field. We guessed it, and then we showed by substitution that it worked. Um, and then another way is we can actually directly solve it. So you can actually solve this. Uh, all right, state the range of solutions passing through 4.3 uh, negative 1.9. Okay, so the x value here doesn't really matter because we know that the slope is the same no matter what x is. Really, it's the negative 1.9 that matters. So if I go to the slope field and I look for negative 1.9, negative 1.9 is like, uh, like may, maybe, oh, well, I mean, I guess I should put it in the right place, sort of. So 4.3, negative 1.9. 1, 2, 3, 4.3, negative 1.9 would be like right around there. So that's 4.3 comma negative 1.9. All right, look where that is. If I were to draw the solution curve, 
going to the right, it's going to immediately slope down toward y equals negative two, and then uh, just flatten out. It's never gonna get there, um, but we don't really know that yet, but it's never gonna get there. And then if I went back and to the left, I would slope up really quickly, and then I would just even off around y equals two. So the range that you're gonna get is going to be uh, negative two to two. If the initial condition or the point that I was given had been, um, I don't know, five comma 2.8, right? Five comma 2.8 is above y equals two. So the range would have been uh, from two to infinity. If I had started below y equals negative two, uh, say like uh, negative six comma uh, negative three, negative six, negative three. So you're gonna go up to negative two, down to negative infinity, but that's all you're gonna do. So negative infinity and negative two are just y is less than negative two. All right, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at this problem and see if we can do it. So we have our differential equation is dy dx equals x minus y. And we have a slope field. And in the slope field, we have three points. We wanna find or sketch uh, the solution curve that's passing through those points. All right, so I always do this uh, in the same way. Kind of picture, picture this as flowing water. Um, if I start here and I go to the right, I'm going to kind of move over and then it looks like I slope up. And then do you see the line that's going through here? I don't know if you can actually see it, but there looks like there's a line. It looks like, uh, what is it? It looks like y equals x minus one kind of is just in the slope field. Like that's where the slopes appear to always be equal. Um, so that's going to serve as an asymptote for this solution. And picture it, like you're dropping things in here. Over time, they're all gonna flow toward that line. Uh, if we go in the opposite direction, uh, it's gonna kind of do this and then get, get like pretty steep and then there. So one of the things not to stress about is if you hit one of these lines at exactly its mid, at, with the little tiny segments, at exactly its midpoint, you should have the same slope there. Otherwise, everyone's just doing their best. Everyone understands that. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. So B, I actually think for B I can do a good job because I'm gonna let the, the app try to turn my garbage into a line. And there you go. So if you drop in here at exactly the point B, you're on that line, the slope will never deviate because the slope of a linear function is constant. So once you're on that line, you're never getting off of that line. So that would be my solution curve through B. And then C, uh, and I, I just thought of something that I forgot to talk about on the last one. We'll talk about it here and then I'll like go back and talk about it there. Uh, okay, so if you drop in at C, uh, it's not like super fast, but it's not not fast. You're gonna to tend toward that. This way, on the other hand, I mean, so look at that. How many different types of solutions do you see, right? So I see three types of solutions. One of them is just the line that's through B, and that's the only one of its type. Uh, the, the curve that's passing through A, on the other hand, I think that it, like no matter what point I pick that's above that line, above the line going through B, I think it'll have the same general shape um, and so that seems like another type, so that's two. And then anything that's below the line, I think is gonna generally look like the curve through C, so that's a third type of solution. This differential equation has three different types of solutions, and they all seem to be based on their relationship to that line that's passing through the slope field. It's gonna be a big thing. Uh, we're gonna talk about that a lot. That line actually is gonna be really important. Uh, we're gonna guess it in a second, and then we're gonna prove that it is the solution. But let me just go back to this other slope field. How many solution types do you see here? I see five, right? So there's things that start above y equals two, like the one through a. There's y equals two, that is a solution type. It's the only one of that type, but it's still a solution type. There are things that look like b, the solution curve through the point b, right? So trapped between negative two and two. Then there's y equals negative two, it's the only one of its type, but it's still a type. And then anything that starts below y equals negative two will look basically like uh, the curve that goes through the point C. 
So there's actually five solution types here. That's a lot of solution types. Um, here we only have three. All right, so let's see. The next thing that we wanna do is find the linear function that is a solution to the differential equation. So looking at the graph and trying to come up with the equation of this thing, I think that because it definitely looks like it goes through um, zero, negative one, and it looks like it has a slope of one because it looks like it also goes through one, zero, I'm gonna say that I think the solution is uh, y equals, uh, what do I think it is? X minus one is a solution. Okay, now how can I prove that it's a solution? Well, um, I'm gonna do the thing where I take the derivative and I substitute my solution into the differential equation and show that we get the same thing, right? So if we take the derivative to one, let's take the derivative and we'll get dy dx equals one, right? So that part's easy enough. All right, now two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute into uh, the diff eq, into diff eq. Okay, so the differential equation is dy dx equals x minus y. So it'll be dy dx equals x minus, well, what's y? y is equal to x, er, do it. y is equal to x minus one. So it's x minus the quantity x minus one, which simplifies to one. So this is a solution. Okay, and that's a really good way of doing this. Now, I can think of another way to do it. Um, and it's because it's a linear function, right? So if it's a linear function, what is the concavity of a linear function? The concavity of a linear function, so where am I gonna squeeze this in? Uh, I'm gonna borrow some space over here. Uh, and I'm gonna say this is like part B continued, I guess. So B continued, okay. So concavity of a line. So uh, concavity of a line should be zero, which means that's the second derivative, right? So the second derivative should be zero for a linear solution. Now, the differential equation is dy dx equals x minus y. I can find the second derivative of that. So if dy dx is x minus y, then the second derivative is gonna be the derivative of x is one, the derivative of y is dy dx. So dy dx, okay, but what is dy dx? dy dx is x minus y. So I'm gonna take x minus y, uh, I'm gonna take x minus y, and I'm gonna substitute it in for dy dx. So I'm gonna say that the second derivative can I make this bigger? Sure can. The second derivative is one minus x minus y, which would be uh, one minus x plus y. And I know that because I've written the second derivative two different ways, that this should be equal to this. So if that is the case, then one minus x plus y equals zero, or y equals x minus one. So that is another way that we could find the solution. So we found it graphically by looking at the slope field. We guessed the solution and then confirmed it by doing substitution and by taking the derivative. And we thought like, well, it's a linear solution. So the concavity is zero, second derivative is zero, find the second derivative, set it equal to zero and see what happens. The thing that happens is you get that line which is crazy. There's more to that line, by the way. So if this is where the second derivative equals zero, where dy dx, um, no, well, where the second derivative equals zero, right? Where the concavity is zero. It's also the dividing line, the literal dividing line between solutions that are concave up and solutions that are concave down. So look at our, look at our slope field, right? Any solution curve, that is above the line, y equals x minus one, is concave up. 
every single solution that's above that line. Draw some in for yourself. I'm not gonna do, well, I'll do it with a laser pointer, right? So here, I don't know, here, maybe uh, here. All of those solutions were concave up. Any solution below the line is gonna be concave down. This, like this, like this. Those are all concave down. So it's actually the dividing line. It's, re it's a really interesting idea. And sometimes you have to answer that question, like uh, find for what, uh, under what conditions will the solutions be concave up? So in this, in this case, I would answer, the solution curves are always concave up if they're above the line y equals x minus one. It's like a really neat thing. All right, let's do part C. And then uh, call, this a, call this the video, right? Because this one's probably long because I feel like I've been rambling. But there's just so much information contained in a slope field. You kind of have to ramble. You have to think about them a lot. You gotta play around with them, right? So uh, there's, there are videos I haven't shown you yet, but there are videos on how to use your Inspire to create a slope field. Do it, just create a bunch of slope fields. Look at them, see if you can find patterns, uh, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, play around with differential equations that look like this. dy dx equals x minus y, 3x minus y, 5x minus 2y. Can you come up with the linear solution? And once you know the linear solution, do you know where the curves are going to be concave up, concave down? Um, these are all things you should definitely think about. All right, let's see this next question. So show that the solution curve passing through the point 1, 1 is, show that the solution curve passing through the point 1, 1 has relative minimum at 1, 1. Okay, that confused me for a second. So we're going to try to show that there's a relative minimum at the point 1, 1. All right. So you will find with these that the first derivative test is a nightmare, but the second derivative test is usually pretty straightforward. And that's what I'm gonna to try to do here. So my differential equation is dy dx we know is just x minus y. So then dy dx at the point one one is zero. Okay, so the first derivative is zero. We, in our little uh, digression, we actually found the second derivative already. We know that the second derivative is one minus x plus y, right? So we found that one minus x plus y. So if I evaluate this at one, one, I get uh, just one, which is greater than zero. Okay, so the first derivative is zero, the second derivative is positive, which means we can draw like a little picture. We definitely have a relative minimum. So I'm gonna write that up and say, since uh, dy dx equals zero and the second derivative, I hate saying that one. I don't even really know the right way to say it, like d squared y dx squared, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's the second derivative. That notation means second derivative. So I usually just say, the second derivative um, is greater than zero at one, one, then y equals f of x has relative minimum at one, one. And then if you want, you can say by second derivative test. I'll say by the second derivative test. Second derivative test. And we did it. Okay, so our little uh, digression that we went on there, a little tangent, uh, actually helped us out because we ended up needing the second derivative anyway. You will use the second derivative test when you're dealing with slope fields frequently. Now, I said I was gonna cut this video there, but I think it's really interesting to take a look. Notice that uh, there are like zero slopes all the way through this thing. They're kind of hard to find. I'm gonna try to highlight them. Uh, you know what, I'll just like draw them in, um, in red, I guess, right? So zero slope, zero slope. You always wanna look for zero slopes. Now these seem to be on a line. I'm not gonna do all of them, but like they seem to be on a line. Well, if dy dx equals zero, that means that x minus y equals zero, which means that y equals x. Everywhere along the line, y equals x, the first derivative is zero. That's really interesting. Also, everywhere along the line y equals x, 
the second derivative is equal to one, which means every solution curve that is above our line y equals x minus one, every solution curve above the line y equals x minus one, when it hits the line y equals x, it will have a relative minimum. Every solution curve. So uh, I'm not gonna draw those, but I will uh, laser them in. Like a laser pointer, I'll do this. That was a solid uh, steady hand there. This, every one of them, when it hits there, it's always going to have a relative minimum. These are the kinds of things you get from slope fields. You get a lot of information. Um, so I'm gonna cut this here. This is a long video probably, I don't actually know. Uh, I recommend that you uh, take a look at the notes again, maybe get another copy of the notes and try to do them over again. Uh, maybe watch the video again, I don't know. I will see you in the next one.